I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Creek Devil. We're interviewing Jason today in Arizona. He's giving us an update on a very active area that's been going on for some time now. Uh, our good friend the judge is joining, Tom and I. He's going to lead this session, so your honor, you want to take the microphone? You bet. Jason, welcome to the show. You and I have spoken a number of times. Um, this all takes place where? And you can be as vague or as specific as you care to be. Mm, let's just say south, southeastern Arizona. And is this one... Area. Okay. Is this one particular spot or have you been to areas within miles of each other? Oh yeah. No, it's, uh, it's not just in one spot <clears throat> and there's several places I've been to. And, uh, you know, as you just have to look at the topography of the land and, uh, I find them, uh, I find evidence of them. Um, so yeah, they're, in my opinion, they're, there's a lot more in Arizona than what people understand. You know, everybody talks about the Mogollon monster. Well, they've been seen in Mexico too. You know. So, so as you go out, and are the areas far enough apart where you are of the opinion that this is more than one group, or do you think it's one group that you keep running into? No, it's several groups. Okay, now. Uh, tell us about the first time. What what took you there? Why were you going? What attracted you to the spot? Were you looking for these things, or were you just going to go out and have fun? No, I wasn't looking for them at all. Um, basically, I, I went down this certain area, and I was just kind of out and about with my dogs, and and I just happened to start looking down and on the ground, and uh, there was tracks everywhere and i was kind of dumbfounded about it and i called will about it because i couldn't figure out why why people would allow their kids to run around barefoot in this stuff i mean we're talking so, mesquite cactus we're talking nasty stuff that you're not uh, gonna let a six-year-old child run around in so these tracks then were small mm-hmm Yep, and the smallest one that I have is three inches up to, oh, as far as cast, probably about 12, 11 inches. And okay. now I have seen bigger ones. I've seen 20-inch tracks. Same area or different location? Oh, uh, no. Uh, one was, okay, there's an 18-inch track in, in my area. Then I went to another area. Not real far. I mean, it's probably say seven eight miles um and then that one was a 20 inch track now and there the were several tracks, of them the tracks are embedded in what type of soil is it very or what do you see well yeah it's uh it's in clay and water um basically you take the the pottery's clay and you know put your hand in it I mean, you're not going to get away from it. There's, there's no way of wiping those out unless you dig them out. So it's, it's, it's a consistency of the soil is if they step there, they're not getting rid of it. Now, I have found evidence of it looked like something was taking a limb and actually tried brushing it away. Um, I've seen that on a number of occasions. Brushing, um, brushing. We, Brushing, brushing the blood yeah. off. Oh yeah, you can you can see a limb that was broken off, and they used it to, to brush away the track. Oh, to brush away the track. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it looked like an intentional act to uh, uh, dissipate whatever track they were leaving behind. Oh yeah. Well, what I've known is that as far as what I call the babies, 
um, anywhere from, like I said, three inch. And okay, this is what got me the most is I found three inch tracks with five toes in it in this, this soil substance. And I'm like, okay, who's going to let a newborn run around here barefoot? And there was more than one. And they were walking. Um, so it's, you know, put two and two together, and it's like, well, it's there, you know. But I've never, like I said, I've never been harmed by these things. I do believe they, they know I'm there. Um, I don't know. I mean, like I said, there's, uh, I put stuff out for them. I probably shouldn't. What kind um, of stuff? But I do. What apples. kind of stuff? Apples. Just apples. Apples, I keep it real simple. I don't give them candy or anything like that, you know. I don't think they take long, it anyways. They're smarter than that. How long between the times that you place the apples and you come back? <laughs> Days, hours? <laughs> yeah. But sometimes it was uh, the next day, everything was gone. Okay. Um, then there's also been times to where it took them three or four days. I know one thing, they don't like granny apples, I'll tell you that much. Mm. That's the last ones that they actually take. Now, that one, I did find an 18-inch footprint down there. And you could see where this creature had walked from this tree to the other one. Um, they're very aware that I'm aware of their tracks, I think. And why they let me see them, I have no idea. I've had, and I've shared this with Will before, um, their hands. I've got prints of their hands uh, where they were working on walking on all fours. I've seen three of them. And uh, just a real quick glimpse. It wasn't like Will's experience. I probably wouldn't have any underwear after that, I think. Well, tell us, tell us about those times you saw them. What happened? Well, first time was the time that I actually called Will. That was the first time that I uh, I casted tracks. Didn't know what I was doing. Still don't really know what I'm doing anyway. But they come out pretty good. But um, I was casting tracks, and uh, where I was at, I casted them. And everything was fine, and then I started getting this smell, and it's it's um, kind of classic. Well, it's not really classic, but it's what other people say, you know. Except that they, you know, people say a wet dog smell. What I smelled smelled like something just straight up dead, maggot infested, and just nasty. And I, I was raised on a farm. I've I've smelled dead carrion. I'm a hunter. I, I've smelled it all. I mean, we got chickens, horses, we got everything where I'm at right now. Um, this was like, and I was by myself. And I was waiting for the tracks to set up, and there was a, a barrier of tamarisk, okay, which is salt cedar. And whatever, and come to find out, whatever this thing, well, I know what it was now, but it was on the other side of the tamarisk. It wasn't real happy that I was casting tracks, and it gave this odor, and I'm like, oh, my God, what is that smell? That's like the smell of death. And I was like, where is this coming from? I didn't smell when I got there. Well, uh, um, as I was, uh, finally I popped the, the cast out, and they came out pretty good, and I was pretty proud of myself. But um, I had my dogs in the side-by-side, -side, and I walked back to the side-by-side, -side, and I had actually let my, my older dog out. He was just kind of running around, just doing his thing. And uh, I just happened to look up above him, and I see a, a black flash, just real quick, like 1.5 seconds, just something big, something black, just like a shadow. And I was like, okay, well, maybe that was a bird. Maybe that was a crow or something. But there was no birds around. So, anyways, I just discounted that. And then I went ahead. And like I said, I didn't expect anything about these 
these creatures or anything, especially in this area. Got in the, my side by side and I took off. And I was going up the road and I had a clear shot of 200 yards. And I just happened to look back down because I was trying to place kind of where I was at and where I casted them. And, and I had a really good shot of, of where I was at. And I looked down and something caught my eye. I stopped and it only happened, like I said, usually when this happens, 1.5, maybe two seconds. It's almost like a kind of a, a blur in a way. Well, whatever this one had really long arms. And I was telling Tom this a while back because I got pretty freaked out by it. Um, it was moving across the road and it was using its right arm and its left leg at the same time. And it was sidestepping. It was, it affected me because it was not natural. And that kind of spooked me. And I was like, okay. Well, as soon as I saw that, as soon as I stopped, it almost, it, it, it almost like hit the ground. It just it disappeared, and I was like, okay, well, I'm done here, and I'm going to go on. So I did. That was the first time. Now let me stop you there for a moment. Uh, you said okay. you, when you were casting the track, it wasn't happy. Uh, what gave you that opinion? Oh, hell, it was a smell. Okay. Oh, my God, and just the feelings alone. Um, well, then I need to back up a little bit, is, is that... Okay, before that, I was casting a track, and I thought, well, you know, I'm just going to mess around with the dogs here and, and just kind of hang out, and, and I was doing that. And I had this, I was sitting in a chair, and I had this ominous feeling that something was watching me. And I've experienced this elk hunting, deer hunting. You know, you can't put your, you can't put your finger on it, but you know that something's watching you. Sure. Well, this was like hitting me in the back of the head, like someone's coming up and just hitting you in the back of the head. It's like, look over here. Well, I did it. It made me feel so uncomfortable. I walked back to the um, side by side because I, I knew that the tracks weren't done. And I just had a feeling that these, well, whenever I, I found the tracks, I, I kind of started putting two to do together that, hey, maybe there's something around here. Maybe, you know. Anyway, so I started figuring, okay, well, I'm believing that these, these creatures are around. And I went and got my pistol and uh, walked back to my chair, and I sat down, and I got cup holders on my chair. Well, this thing was, it was in a, uh, a cottonwood tree, okay, big cottonwood tree, very dense, you couldn't see in there. But that's where I was getting the feeling from. So, and that was to my left. So I turned to my left and I took my pistol. I sat down, first of all, and I put my back to them, to whatever this thing was, which probably wasn't a good idea, but I did it anyway. And I pulled out my gun and I took it out of the holster and I held it straight up in my hand and I turned it. And when I did that, I looked to the left and I looked right directly at the tree. And then I took my holster and I put the gun back in the holster and I took the gun and I set it right in the cup holder where whatever this thing was could actually see that I had a gun. Instantly, everything stopped. I didn't get those nasty feelings. So did the smell, went did, ahead the smell, and, did the smell stop? Yeah, it did. Instantly. So when you would assume from that that instead of this creature just having an ongoing odor, it disseminates that for a particular purpose. Well, I just think he was pissed off. He didn't want me to have the damn tracks. And I've done this before. Every time I cast tracks, something starts tearing up Jake. You know, I guarantee it. You know, they don't want you to have the tracks. They don't. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, let's, and let's look at that. to me time and time again. Let's look at that for a What's moment. That? Let's we're there. Uh, how many times has that happened? Uh, three, four, uh, more than that? Uh, <laughs> and is it the same kind uh, of a thing. Well, the last time put me in the hospital, put it that way. So I think they got one up on me. 
Well, tell us about that. Well, that, I mean, this is this is a while back, and I had someone else with me. That's all right. They want to be remain anonymous, and and uh, they were with me, and I, I, you know, I just kind of give my heads up. Look, you go down there. I, I want you to know. I think I'm crazy, whatever. But I want you to know that something could happen, and I want you to be prepared for it. Because, yeah, you, that's part of it. You got to be prepared mentally, physically, everything. And then that's that's why I, I call Will as much as I have. And because I was freaking out, I was like, I don't want to do anything wrong. You know, I want to be able to come home one day. You so know? you went down there um, with a friend. You went down with a friend. Yeah, I went down there, found tracks, and here I go. And I was feeling pretty good because I was, you know, normally I go by myself, which probably isn't a good idea, but I do. And I always take my dogs. So I'm really not by myself, but, um, anyway, so we get down there and I had some casting material. I started casting the tracks and, uh, when we, you know, we were, we were sitting there and we were talking and, and letting the dogs do their thing. And, and, uh, and then I asked her, I said, you feel that? And she's like, what is that? And I said, we're being watched right now. She's like, yeah, that's kind of what I feel. And I was like, well, let's see if it gets any uh, more intense. Um, and it did. And then we started hearing, I've never heard a knock. Okay. I don't, I don't know what people are talking about knocks. Uh, I don't know. Uh, these guys, they don't, they don't make themselves known. It's not down here. Uh, to my knowledge, well, that day, whenever I, I casted those tracks, there was uh, about 100 yards south of me was a mesquite tree that was just moving, moving and carrying on and breaking branches. Now, they do that. Um, and something was just tearing up everything over there. How big was the tree? Uh, it made me feel real uncomfortable. What's that? How big was the tree? Well, that was a full-size mesquite tree. Uh, probably, I don't know, probably about 40, 50 feet, something like that. And was there it's movement? a big tree. It had been down there for a long time. Was there movement up in the very, branches? Or, or do you think the Oh, no, 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 no. This is, this is down. This is down lower. Okay. Because I was looking at it, and I could see it moving, and, and I told the person I was with, I said, see that tree? And she said, yeah. And I said, and she said, I hear it. And I was like, well, something's not really happy with me right now. And then we started getting those feelings again. That we're not wanted and something was watching and, and very threatening. Uh, I've had those feelings so many times that there's times I didn't even, I didn't even go down there. I just, you know, I'm like, no, not today. Today's not a good day. Well, I found the tree that this thing disassembled about, I'm going to say about four days later, uh, <laughs> I guess when I had enough courage to, to actually go down there and check out this tree, but it was thrashed. And we're talking about something that took a mesquite tree with uh, lumber chains and just thrashed the living hell out of it. I mean, there was big limbs broke. I found limbs that were bent over is classic uh tree breaks i found a lot of those um and big limbs too i mean i'm looking at a mesquite right now that uh probably about 18 inches in diameter a limb that was broke and i've uh, will's will's got several different pictures i sent them i don't know if i sent you any of them or not but i think tom has too but anyway so um, back to this, this deal. Um, and then something just in the side of my head, I remembered Will saying, you know, they don't, they don't like guns. Well, I had a 30, 30 cause I never go up there without any guns. And I think I was telling you this, I, uh, took out my 30, 30. And I told this person who I was with, I said, watch this. And I took out the 30, 30, didn't point it at anything. But I grabbed it by the muzzle and I just stuck it on my shoulder. And I was in an open enough spot that they could see what I was doing. And I've got a clip that goes on the side of the butt of the gun. So they can see the bullet. The There's like 10 rounds right there. Instantly, everything stopped. 
And she's like, wow. I said, do you feel that? And she said, yeah, I don't feel that way anymore. And whatever this thing was over the tree stopped. Just gone. Just everything was like back to normal. Um, what else do you want me to? Well, how did you get to the hospital? You said you went to the hospital. What was the situation that put you there? Well, I don't know. I'm not trying to get in the woo part too much, but something definitely physically happened to me. And this other individual that I was with, we uh, felt comfortable, and I, I think it was a payback, personally, because I showed the gun, I showed force. Well, I felt good enough. I thought, well, I'm going to go on down south. So grabbed the tracks or uh, the cast, and we went south. Um, How far? How far? We got down to... Mm, about three miles. Okay. Three and a, it's about three and a half miles, something like that. It gets down to a part to where it's it's hard for you to to get in there, and it's really thick, and it's just it's just really gnarly stuff, you know. Well, I always remember that you know I want to make sure that I turn around my vehicle in case I have to get out quickly, and that's that's key for everybody else that's that's around these things or. You need a you need to park your vehicle to where you can haul ass if you need to haul ass straight up. Sure, sure. And I did trust me after that day. Um, anyway, so I did that, and then I got out and I thought, hey, this is a really nice little place here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and it's the first time I'd been up there. I'm gonna put out some apples. I'm gonna do this and that. Put out a whole bunch of them, and then you could see where this this cliff or arroyo was cut through the water and it was it kind of s curved back in there where you couldn't see you had to actually walk back in here it's like a little mini canyon and uh and i was like well that's pretty cool you know so i went and looked at it and then the other person i was with they came up there and now uh, there, there there may be people who don't know what an arroyo is can you explain that all right well an arroyo it's kind of a valley that's been cut out by water. It's just watershed, basically. Um, but now, what this was, it, it was on the face of a cliff, and the water was running off of it, and it dug down the face of this cliff, and it, it created this cavern, okay? Sure. And it was really cool, I mean, you know, because, it, like I said, it S curve. You could only it turn to a 90-degree angle. I couldn't see past that. So well, what did I do? I got out, and I was like, oh, I'll go check this out. So I walked over there, checked it out, and it was stair stepping up, and it was up on um, connected to a mesa up on top. How wide well, was it? Maybe two or three feet wide. Okay, very so we've secluded, got this very dark place. Okay, how deep okay. was that arroyo cut into the side of the hill? Mm, well. Probably, it probably cut maybe about two or three feet. It's just okay. enough for a person to get in there. Okay, you know, so we've got a, a body of water. We've got a body of water, two and a half, three feet in width, coming down a, uh, a bluff or a mesa that has actually cut its way two to three feet yeah, into the exactly. Side. Okay, good. Yep. Uh, keep going. What happened? It was like a, it, when I was looking at it, I was thinking, wow, this is like a little, little mini Grand, Grand Canyon. You know, picture the Grand Canyon, and but then you know it's it's miniaturized. Um, it would have taken a lot to actually climb up to the top. Well, this person I was with, they were like, "Well, you know what? I would, I'd really like to go up there." Well, they were afraid that they would get snake bit. Um, they felt like something was. Uh, they they felt that there was a need for them to go up there. Well, at the time, I didn't know that until actually I talked to the person later on, but. Um, anyway, so we put out the apples and, uh, I was, I had let my dog out and I was putting him back, back in the side by side and, or let me back up for a minute. I, I put my dog up because there was something that was across from us that was shaking trees, just tearing up Jake, you know, I mean, snapping a limb, just couldn't see what it was. It was just making a whole bunch of noise. And I mean, just pow, like, you know, uh, gunshots. 
going on. And uh, so I grabbed him because I kind of had a kind of an inkling of what it was because this is the same time that I had pulled out my gun earlier while I believe I was being followed. Well, that or maybe I got into the adults. I don't know. To this day, I still don't know. Well, um, this other people, this other person that was with me had never experienced the smell, the nasty smell. Um, I never ever even said anything to him about it. Um, and as soon as I got my dog in there, I was trying to get him in the harness, and they're like, "Well, okay." Uh, they're like, "Do you smell that?" And I was like, "What does it smell like?" And she said, "It it smells like." dead matter, nasty, putrid, pus-filling, dead matter. And I was like, oh, we got to go. we got to go. we got to go now. Because, I, and I had already, she, well, they heard, they heard what was going on behind me. So I turned right around, and I got in, and we took off. And everything was good, but, uh, this person had told me uh, she they were they were very scared. They wanted out of the area. They also told me I did not want to look behind you because I felt like this thing was right there. And they were more worried that I was going to be taken. Um, what was the what was the significance of the arroyo? One was on the left. One was on the right. We're right smack dab in the middle. We're on the road. Okay, and so I knew one was behind me, and I knew one was, well, according to this other person, one was right across from us, coming so down you, the arroyo. Was that based upon the tearing up of the tree or just a feeling or a visual? What, what led you to believe that they were there? No, we didn't. I didn't have a visual, but I did have a visual of the tree that was being. This is a cottonwood tree that was coming down, big okay. cottonwood tree. All right. I mean, they were doing everything in the power, and you know they wanted us out of there, and I, I think that they took offense that I pulled out my gun. So, we left without an incident, and we proceeded to go all the way back uh, down where we had come from, and. Uh, and then about two o'clock, I just started getting these pains in my chest and uh, talked to my son about it. And he looked it up. He said, I think, I think maybe you're having a heart attack. How old are you? Well, I'm 50 years old. Oh, you don't sound that old. Um, okay. <laughs> well, I don't feel that old. And I've never ever to my, I've always had perfect health. I've never, ever had a problem like this ever. Okay, I was going to slump it off, and I didn't call this person. This person had already left uh, and went back to their, they live in another town about three, four hours away. The one that had come um, Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I got in there, and they gave me um, those nitro pills, a couple of them. And they said, well, the good news is you're not having a heart attack. You have an esophagus. Uh, something with the loosening of the esophagus because it felt like right in the middle of my chest that there was like, you know, and the only way I can depict it, it sounds weird. The movie Aliens, that that thing's breaking out of this guy's chest, that's mm -hmm. the way I felt. And I tried laying do you, down and I tried do going to sleep tribute, and I couldn't do it. Do you attribute this to the your your experience or do you think it is unrelated? No. No, I attribute it to when we were in smack dab in the middle, I think that I got hit with infrasound. Everything okay. I've been led, I've been in that area, I've never had a problem with it since. Of course, I've also been told by a lot of different people as well, they were trying to get you out, you're being a hardhead, you're not going out. So I think for the most part, they've, they've left me alone. Now, how many times have you been back since you had the problem, uh, the physical problem? Mm. Let me see. That was in August. Oh, I'm going to say probably, I don't know, 
50, 60 times. Goodness gracious, Jason. Yeah, I know. <laughs> There's other things that we can't we can't really talk about that confirm what what I'm talking about, but we, we can't we can't do that. And Will knows what I'm talking about. There's there's other things that have been, let's just say, seen out there that I'm not full of shit. So. You want to jump in here, Will, and yeah. explain that to us? I ain't, well, I'm not going to. Will's going to have to do that. I'm not going to do it. So. I just asked him. Is there um, something you feel comfortable talking about, Will? I'm not sure what he's referring to at the moment, but uh, there's one area. Okay. That we... um, remember the GPS? GPS oh, the, reading the images. Yeah, we really um, can't go into someone, that. Yeah, no, I didn't think so. And that's fine. We don't need to go into that. You know, th- th- that's the whole thing. I'm not. I'm not here to prove that these things live and breathe. I know they do. Why I'm and like I said, I called you several times, and I don't understand why I'm in the middle of this. Well, but, okay. uh, you you went back up fifty to 60 times following the physical effects that you had of these things. I, I have to take my hat off to you. Uh, <laughs> either that or... My girlfriend thinks I'm going to die one of these days. <laughs> I thought perhaps we could all chip in and get you a coat, a white coat with very long sleeves that you tie behind. Oh, yeah? Uh, no, I was just what, think uh, I'll just take Tom's method and do the two... Uh, hams around my neck and just go on there yeah yeah well what has occurred since that time in, in all of these instances you've got back uh what would you say would be the top experience you've had since then well i've been left certain items when i first started doing this two days after i, I was left a, a what i consider a gift Okay, I picked a I picked an area out that I'm actually putting this stuff out. And I was left a certain item, man-made, and it wasn't there two days before. And when I went back, everything was gone. And then on top of that, um, I was something, well, not something, I know what it is. Um, I, have, I have tracks and I have handprints of what I'm going to call the babies, making me a, a little, kind of like a shrine almost. It's it's not a shrine. It's, it's just, I, I don't, it's got a stick in the middle and it's got rocks that are, are put around like a half circle. But when I found it, it was right below where I had actually put this stuff. And you What's can the- visibly see little footprints, bare footprints. You can see handprints where they move the dirt. And I took pictures of all that. What are you um, leaving, Jason? What's that? What are you leaving? Apples? What else? Oh, yeah. Apples. Um, uh, I started giving them peanut butter. Um, I can, uh, I'm just going to put this out. Uh, <laughs> they like honeydew. <laughs> I put out watermelon, but it was kind of. Uh, I think it was inert to them, and uh, they didn't take it for two or three days. And then I decided, okay, well, I'm going to make it easy for them. And I took it, and I cut it in half, and then I held it up because I, I felt like I was being watched, which I was. And I just took a big bite of it, and then I set it, set it where I was going to set it, and guess what? It's all gone. All gone every time. Uh, every within a, a less than a day, gone. Peanut butter, gone. No jars, no lids, no nothing. It's like nothing even occurred there. Let me Except be the devil's the track. Are there now? Okay, that's what I wanted to talk about. When these items disappeared, in addition to that, you saw tracks around the items. Oh yeah, that's what that's what started it, and I thought, well, this would be a good place to just kind of start leaving stuff out. I see. And it snowballed after that. It was wow. It's a nice so place. Often, one way in, one often, way out. How often have you left stuff there? Uh, well, 
Um, I'm kind of on my downside right now because I'm actually uh, in another area, um, another town, actually three hours from home. Um, I usually I usually leave stuff there. If I'm if I'm gonna leave out of town, I leave them stuff. Um, and then you know I'll come back five or six days, and of course nothing will be there. And then I'll leave stuff out again. Um, see, very smart tracks, for trail cams. You see tracks and so forth around it every time. Yeah. Now there's there's something else to this. Okay. Um, I quit taking pictures for a while because I figured that they were on to me. Um, I got I got a lot more other stuff that I've taken pictures of. And I think now they're pretty savvy that, you know, hey, we were down there last night. Why is he pe- taking the picture? Why is he pulling this thing out and uh, and taking a picture of where we were at last night? I found fish that were eaten. Uh, I found carrion. I found bones. I found uh, all kinds of stuff. I got a bone. I don't even know what the heck it is. And that was given to me, too. And I think I give Will a picture of that. I think it's I think it's a sheep bone is what I'm thinking. Now have you moved? But it your... looks like it was used for a tool. Okay. Do you remember uh, that? You're... I think I sent you a picture yeah, of that. I saw it. I saw that, yes. Um did you oh, move your heck? location of your exploration here? Or are you staying in the same spot? Well, I mean, I've got three different uh, locations um, real close to each other. Um, Because I kind of, I, 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 oh, yeah, something like that. I mean, there's area one, area two, and area three. Area two is right in between the other two areas that I actually uh, put stuff out for them. Hey, Jason, can I jump in for a second? Yeah, go ahead. I, I want to clarify something because our, our forensic anthropologist, John, will want to know this. That bone you found that you felt was used as a tool, do you know, mm-hmm. have any idea why you think it was used as a tool and for what purpose? Well, I think that they were actually digging clams, and I think they used the, the base of the, the the bone to actually break the shells. Was there signs of that? Or maybe they were just eating them whole. I don't know, because on the base of the where the joint is, it's flat, and it's really super smooth, like it was used for something. Mm-hmm. Was there signs in the near the water there where they'd been digging? Oh, yeah. Okay. I found butt there, prints. Clam shells, et cetera. <laughs> were there shells? Yeah, I never told you. You're, you're probably going to crucify me over this one, Will, but I went down there one time, and I found butt prints that were about... I'm gonna say two and a half, three feet wide. I don't know. I've seen that myself and, when I was uh, in the mud. When I first got involved in this, oh. I found a print just like that in the snow. Oh, my ex-wife was never there. <laughs> oh yeah! Wow, maybe mine was. <laughs> Tony, does that include the hair and everything? And turn her loose, you know. <laughs> does that include the hair and everything, Tony? Yeah, Jason, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. Don't even go there with me, trust me. <laughs> hey, Jason, were there, uh-huh. she- were there shells around, empty shells? Because I know what Native nope, Americans... you know, that's one thing. Um, well, let me back up. Where I found the butt prints, okay? We're, th- we're talking basically a big, big, big fat woman with a big old crack, de- very definite hair. Uh, and like I said, well, I never took a picture of and I kicked myself because I wish I would have now. And right next to her, um, and I'm figuring it was a female, you could see where they were digging, they're digging, uh, in, in the sand. And I, and I know that there's fresh, freshwater clams there. And from that point on, and I, I do have a photo of one of them that was actually laying down with hair. Yeah, I did see that. Um, and then all the babies. I do have a question. How do you, how did you determine that was a female, the backside print? Well, I didn't. I'm just assuming that it would be a female. Now it could be a male. I don't know. But I found these little three-inch footprints with five toes in the mud, 
that all ran up to wherever this thing with the big crack was sitting. And uh, it's like she or he got up and took the babies with them. Playtime was over. Well, and that I know, do have a picture of. Native American sites where they are harvesting uh, clams and oysters are notorious for the shells being left. Uh, and, and there are, you know, big piles of shells. And I personally have gone down just with other people on low tide and dug clams. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm not I'm not questioning. I'm just asking. Well, you saw no, no what, what you've got to understand is freshwater clams, okay? And freshwater are smaller than the sea going. And I right. think that these things, personally, I think they're small enough they can just pop them in their mouth like Tic Tac and eat them. I think they eat shells and all. Now, what okay. the bone was used for? No idea. But it was placed. It wasn't there the day before. It was placed on the sandbar for me to find. I truly think that. And now it's got something on the top, and I can't figure out what it is. It's got a cut. I haven't sent it off. It's in my gun safe right now. I don't think it's a Sasquatch bone. I don't think they would give me a bone of their own. I just don't. And I think, like I said, I think it's a, I think it's a sheep bone. But why they gave that to me, and it's been around a long time. It's green. You can see where it's, and we're talking desert country. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I need someone else that can actually look at it and tell me what it is. All right, so you've had... Now, there's another... Oh. oh, go right ahead. Well, there's another interesting feature to all this. And you can believe whatever you want. I just... I, I went down there alone again, like I usually do with my dog. Early morning. You've got, a lot, of, you've got a lot of wind. you got a lot of wind blowing in oh, your phone. Let me... Uh, hold on. Uh, let me walk around this other way. You know, outside fiance is making cookies she's like baking like crazy i was like god damn i'm fat enough <laughs> anyways um the i i feel and and there's another gentleman that i talked to and i don't want to say his name on on the on the podcast but he's helped me out a lot um uh, i was it seems like i was being i was I was pushed certain wildlife items towards me, and a lot of them. And and the way that I see it now, and this is just my own opinion, is they wanted me to shoot those things. They wanted me to kill them so they could take them. Or maybe they were just, I don't know, maybe trying to help me out. I don't know. What kind but of items? Sheep, Akuta Mondays, mule deer, uh, coos deer. Are these bones? Um, oh, no, no. These are live animals. Oh, I see. I see. So you think that they mm-hmm. have herded these animals towards you? Well, and when then one day, I, I mean, in the same area, I see three different species that are coming to me. Maybe I was the lesser of the evil. I don't know. But, you know. I don't think they understand that, you know, you have to have a hunting license in order to shoot stuff like that. And I can't shoot anywhere where I'm where I'm at anyways. It's prohibited, so. Jason, this is Tom. Hey, I want to jump in real quick. Can you give us a real brief description? Uh, I was unfamiliar with the Kuda Mondays until you and I talked <laughs> about it. Uh, give us, mm-hmm. tell us about them and some of the problems these things present. Well, some of the problems, uh, they're very aggressive. Whenever they pack, they pack into 40 to 50 groups. They're in between a badger, a bear, and a monkey. And they're from South America, just like the jaguars. And, yes, there are jaguars in Arizona, a lot of them now. Um, And there's actually wolves that are down there in my area, too. I haven't seen one. I've seen their tracks, but... Anyway, so, I mean, as far as the Kudamundi's, uh, very aggressive. They got teeth. They got claws. They're not a ringtail cat. People call them ringtail cats, and they look like a, a kind of a lemur. Okay, that's, that's, those are the pretty nice ones. 
these are, they can be blonde, they can be black, um, they can be red, very extremely aggressive. They protect their babies for with everything they have. It's like an overgrown rat, and they're just, they're nasty little creatures. Yeah, they, they look like and they're it. throughout Arizona. Oh, okay. they are. And, and one, of the, have, one of the, yeah, one of the questions I just want you to kind of uh, follow up or, or comments is how they, they're kind of a pack animal. Oh, they wanted yeah. to kill my dogs. Right. They put me in back in my side by side. I have a videotape of them. I don't know if I shared that with you yet, but um, we were down in where I'm at, and all of a sudden, once it appears, then two, and then three, and I was like, "Holy crap!" You know, and and I started videotaping, and there was over 45 of them, and then my dogs started going off, and they get a stance like a bulldog. They dig in their front feet and they're ready to fight. And I was like, "No, no, 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 no." no. We're not, I don't have enough bullets for these things. So I basically went on down south, and then I met up with them later on, and they were, and they'll go straight up 90 degree angle, no problem. Awesome. Well, listen, that's all. I just wanted a kind of a brief description, so I'm going to hand it back to uh, back to our well, judge. You can, you can Google it. Um, the Cuda Mondays, and, and the ones that they have down in South America, there's people feeding them, and oh, they're just nice, like a little raccoon. No, no, no. The, the ones out here, uh-uh. No, I was turkey hunting. What they do is they kill wild turkeys. They wait till night. You know, what do turkeys do at night when they're sitting on the roost? They poop. These things smell it on the ground. They go straight up the tree and they kill the wild turkey. They're killing a lot of wild turkeys in Arizona. That's what they do. They eat their own dead. That's a potential food source for the ball, uh, the uh, big one. Well, I had a I had a buddy of mine that was at Mount Graham behind there. Him and his brother. They had a mini fourteen. These things were up in the tree. They were very aggressive, so they started shooting them. And as these things were shooting, and as they were shooting them, dropping them on the ground, these things were grabbing each other, pulling them in the brush, and they're eating them. They're nasty little creatures. They're worse than a badger. You know. But you know what? They're an introduced species to Arizona, so what can you do? Just like the wolves and everything else. You know, personally, I think Sasquatch just grab them and, they're, and they treat them like a possum. You know, we don't have possum down here, but. <clears throat> oh, and back to the, the whole deal with the infrasound. I truly believe that we interrupted a hunt. I did have big horde sheep that came down. We're getting and that. We were wind. in between it. We're getting that wind sound you, again, Jason. Oh, let me get on the other side. Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah no, we. Uh, let me get on the back side. Um, well, basically, uh, I do believe that we interrupted a hunt from Why? what I got. Why do you think because that? he was on the bottom where we were, and uh, we spooked him. And he was probably about 300 yards from where we were at. And they're big over here. They're 300 pound plus. They're big boys. As far as the sheep. I just, I, don't, I can't prove it. It's just the way I feel is that we were we're in the wrong place at the wrong time and they weren't very happy with this because whenever he saw us he spooked and he went up okay you're after saying, that, talking about uh animals and a bigfoot be more descriptive of who went where and how take us through that okay. if you would please well, you the, were the there went straight up yeah Okay. We were there. I was turned around, and this is this is after I put the apples out and everything else. Um, okay. And then I just happened to look down uh, south of me, and I was like, 
I told the person, I said, give me my glasses. I said, turn around and look behind you. They did. And I said, doesn't that look like a, a cow elk? I mean, it was huge. And they're like, yeah. And this, this person's actually from Washington. Um, and I got my binoculars. I was like, no, that's a, that is a big boy. That's a full grown, uh, uh, Rocky Mountain, uh, bighorn. Actually, there's two different types up here. And they have hybrids that are just ginormous. Anyways, um, he was down and he was getting water. As soon as he got his water, he turned around and went straight up. I mean, straight up the cliff. And we couldn't see him anymore. He hit the trees and all that stuff. And then after that, that's, that's whenever we started getting all the nasty stuff across, you know, breaking trees and everything else. We were not wanted there at all. I guarantee it. Very evident. But I think also that ties into the point of the matter is that I pulled out my gun, put it on my shoulder, and we didn't heed the warning. Just what I think. But, you know, like I said, that's just the feelings that I get. I think if we had turned around and we went home, we'd have been all right. Uh-huh. They don't like you for showing force. They like to be in control of things. What and is the latest? That to me time and time again. Well, so, tell us about sometimes. You say they've proven that they don't want you there. What do they exhibit that leads you to believe that? Well, everything can be quiet and everything can be normal, and then all of a sudden, you know, you know, hear a tray go down or. Just something, something in the bush that's just uh, tearing up stuff. Okay. And I was like, okay, well, you guys are trying to scare me. I'm not, okay. Here we go. <laughs> can I be real frank? Sure. Well, is that okay? You guys can delete it out or whatever. Anyway, because I'm just, I'm just basically saying this the way that me and you are just talking, and not that it's a recording. I was down there. I was fishing, and I think maybe I had been there too long. And then, I, I don't know, maybe it was a juvenile that was trying to scare me, or I, I don't know what he was trying to do. All of a sudden, a whole bunch of noise, trees start crashing, you know, all this other stuff. And I'm I'm down there fishing, and it just really pissed me off. Now, wait I a minute. Him, I said, you know what? You said a whole yeah. bunch of noise. So are you talking about more than one of these things? And and what noise? Were they shaking trees? Uh, be more oh, specific. Oh, hell, they weren't shaking trees. They were breaking branches. It was, it was freaking, it was like someone out there with a sledgehammer just whacking. I mean, it wasn't tree knocks, okay? But it, it was it was the ping and the break of trees. Okay. You reach over and grab a uh, 12 die inch diameter limb and you snap it it's going to make a pop could you and then it was just a whole bunch of sticks how many were oh there? yeah and it just huh how many of the individuals were there if you could tell <laughs> well there was two that i could tell but i'm sure there was more okay i don't i don't know like i said maybe they were showing off i don't know what they were doing but and then it just kind of pissed me off and you know, I was kind of in the area, and, and I just yell at him. I mean, it kind of sounds stupid, but I just told him, I said, look, I'm, I'm trying to catch fish for you guys. If I catch fish, I'll leave them. Just leave me the hell alone. Just shut the hell up. Straight up. <laughs> God honest truth. And guess what? They shut the hell up. And I caught fish. I hung them up in the tree, and they were gone. I do it's believe nice. that these things actually understand English. I do. Some form, I don't know. Maybe they know how you feel. I don't know. But that day, uh, it was like, you know what? You guys are not pushing me out. I'm not going to be pushed out anymore. I mean. And everything was fine. It was, it was a great day. You know, I enjoyed myself. I was down there probably three hours, the longest I've ever been down there. Because there's sometimes that I didn't, I didn't feel like I really wanted to, you know, I should be down there. You know, and there's a lot that's, of respect, too. I don't. Well, that sounds exactly uh, like what that was. I mean, you, you, they raised hell and you raised hell and they said, OK, let him fish. 
Oh, yeah. You start yelling at them, and they, they stop. I mean, I'm not running in the bush. I'm not trying to find out where they're bedding or, you know, if they're crouched down and they're they're looking. I'm not doing any of that. I'm in a fixed, I'm in, I'm in a very vulnerable state, you know. They're watching me. But for them to come in and, like I said, I don't know. It's just It just happened that day. I've never really yelled at them. That day I did, mm-hmm. you know. Because I knew what they're, I'm like, look, I, I, I do all this stuff for you guys. Leave me the hell alone. I'm trying to enjoy myself. So um, when was the very last time you had a confrontation with them? Or an encounter? Confrontation is the wrong word. Mm, okay. We had to deal with the infrasound. And then after that... Um, Okay, uh, well, I mean, well, there, I've only told you about one encounter. Uh, the second encounter would kind of freak me out because I had I'm gone down, back down in my area, put out my stuff, and I was going home. And I was cutting through, and I just happened to look over to my left, and there's a cut bank, you know, the road gridder's cut for the fire breaks. And it's wide. It's probably about, I don't know, four or five, maybe even six feet wide. I'm going along, there's a whole bunch of uh, sagebrush, about four or five feet tall. I mean, I'm going along, and I see something black that's huddled down in like a football stance. And it looked like you got a picture of an hourglass. Okay, I saw the head, the shoulders, I saw the hair. It was dark. I didn't see the face. Um, But it looked like he had his knees in between him. And he was crouched down. And I think I caught him coming down the canyon. Um, and I saw him, and I was like, did I, did I really just see what I think I said? And I backed up, and guess what? He was gone. And I said, okay, he's down. He's he's already hit the bottom. He's probably already over there at the tree right now. So I left. Uh, that was the second encounter. Um, the third one... Um, I was going down there, and it was it was later during the day. I usually don't try. I try to be out of there. I, I don't, I'm not down there at dark. No way in hell. Um, but it was later in the day. I went down there, and like I said, one way in, one way out. Um, there's no roads. There's no – there's a trail, put it that way. Um but I was going along, and I just happened to look. It was real thick uh, mesquite. It was in a mesquite thicket. And I see this, and I just happened to look. And I don't even know why I even looked. I just happened to look, just to the left. Like you see a rabbit on the side of the road. You just have that, that, that second, or maybe even a squirrel, just that, that 1.5 second. I saw a leg, size of a telephone pole, hairy. And what, what got me is I could see the hand past the kneecap with the fingers. These fingers were like Twinkies. And then it just shot straight up the tree. In, I don't know, maybe one second, two seconds. No, not even two seconds. It was gone. And I, I got spooked out and I went on and I, I thought, you know what? I'm already committed. I'm not stopping. I'm not acting like I've seen this thing. Because I don't, I don't do that. If I see them, I do not even acknowledge that I see them. I just act like I'm stupid and dumb or whatever and go on about my business. And I went and put the trees out. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that was the quickest trip I ever made. I pulled right up, right up to where I do, doom, 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 put my stuff out and vomit so I was gone. And, but <clears throat> on the way out, I had my 9 millimeter in my hand and my left hand on the steering wheel. And I was, I was going about as fast as that side by side would go. And it goes pretty damn fast. Because I now, figured... this, is, this is interesting, Jason. Mm-hmm. A lot of the accounts that I personally have heard, and perhaps Will and uh, Tom can confirm this, people who leave things out uh, and get that wind again, buddy. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm getting on the other side now. Sorry. All right. Wait. Uh, people oh, who I'm leave good. things. I'm getting in the truck right now. All right. 
All right, we're good. Uh, I hear a lot when people leave out apples and trinkets and whatever, and they're given something back. As as you said, you had a stick or something on it. There's this bond that they talk about, and they rationalize mm. all the things. You have not taken that approach. Uh, no, you, no, you don't want to do that. Don't trust yeah, me. Tell us, at all. tell us why. Tell us why you. Even I'm not going to be bait. I'm not going to. Uh, now, I've left stuff out in the tree before, and they've left stuff, okay? And, uh, you know, I kind of quit there for a while. People need to understand is there, these things are, if they get in a position to take you, they will take you. Uh, and when they leave stuff up in a tree, sometimes they're baiting other animals. Well, you got to think about it, you know. They don't have a grocery store to go to. And, See, uh, and I, they I think up that's, in a tree, a, that's a healthy respect, in my opinion. Well, uh, they, they scare the living shit out of me. I'm just going to tell you that. And Will knows this. I've called Frantic. I've called Tom. I've called everybody. I've even called you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't know what the hell to do. But, now there uh, are there are there are uh, caves up in this area that you mm-hmm. tend to shy away from. Could you tell us about those? Oh, I don't go in the caves. Hell no, no, no. There's a lot. There's a lot of caves. There's, I mean, this area you could spend a good year if you really wanted to do some serious research. And God help you. I mean, like I said, I don't go down there at night. It's it's just so thick and everything else that you could just have something just pluck you right out, and you're gone. You know. You gotta remember too is is these things might be okay. What we say friendly. What happens whenever? I've seen the destruction they can do. Put it that way. Um, trees that are snapped on the tops. I got photographs of them. Uh, something majorly went down, and I talked to Will about it. And he told me, "Well, maybe you need to go out there and see if there's any hair." And I was like, "I'm buddy, I'm not, I'm not even stepping foot out there." What because major? You are on your own. What majorly went down? Like a damn tornado hit down there, and only in one spot. I don't know what happened, but I mean, there's tree limbs down there. Just something just. The only and there's trees all up in there, only one spot, and the the tops are broke. It's I don't know. I don't know if there was a big fight that went down there. I haven't put any recorders out, and I'm going to start doing that. Uh, another friend of mine told me to start putting out some recorders because they're more vocal at night. Um, I got out and I had two other people with me. I got out and took a picture. And I got that that feeling again of you know not wanted and just basically get the hell out. You're not you're not needed here. You're overstepping your bounds. And I'm pretty sure that I actually got about two. I can't zoom into them uh, far enough, but I, I don't even know if I even want to see the face of this thing because it looks pretty nasty. Um, type well, type ones and type threes. And I think this is a type three, you know. So you're seeing, but you haven't seen the face yet. Mm-mm. So it's it's no, from there. I did, I did, I was allowed actually a troll camera and I got 174 pictures in one night. Um, <clears throat> one of them looks like a little, I've got several different pictures of them. One of them is a type one with a conical head hiding and the other one is uh has got a, a nose like a dog fangs and those on are either fangs on either no no i didn't see no teeth of course i don't think it was smiling at the camera but i think it was a learning curve for them because there's so many of these babies that are down there, I believe that the adults are smart enough that they allow the babies to understand them. I don't know. That's just what I get. Could be wrong. What do I know? 
fellas, you know? I, I hate to break in. All here, I know is I've tried and tried. What's that? Hate to break in. We're running a little short on time. So, uh, final uh, okay. final thoughts or comments or questions? I I actually do have one question for Jason. Jason, you had a parallel experience to mine, and that is where these creatures they just flash. You just I think you picked it up out of the corner of your eye. Is that correct, or were you looking mm-hmm. right in that direction? No, no, it was. Well, actually, this this last encounter with the the foot that I said was the size of a telephone pole. Um, that I just happened to just be looking over because it was a thick, thick side of the brush, and I always kind of look over there, you know, just in okay. case there's, there's some kind of other animal. But yeah, that that time there... I was actually looking. Now the other ones were. Flying. Yeah, I remember that. That was that was real interesting, and the one I was curious about was the one before that, where you said you saw it for just like a second and then a half. Did it? When it disappeared, I'm assuming it disappeared behind a tree. Is that correct? I think it. I think it. I think it hit the ground, and uh, uh, there could have been a, a little arroyo or something right there that he ducked into. What he was doing is he was, and I believe this is that was the same day that I got the smell, the nasty smell, the first time I had casted tracks out there. He was he was checking to make sure that I was out of the area, and it just happened that I happened to to look back, um, and I and I stopped when I saw it. It was really these these things when they move they will blow your mind. Oh my God! Well, that's Crazy. all I wanted, and Jason. So it's an thank ongoing you. thing. Was... I can. Yeah, yeah. It I sure mean, is. It's, it's I'm curious to see what's going to happen in August. Boy. <laughs> they're they're still down there. I've 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 had tracks where I see them running, jumping, uh, not skipping because they don't do that. But uh, one of them, and the, well, I'm talking a little one. But one had jumped uh, 15 feet. Of course, I didn't take any pictures because see if I act stupid, I, I, I'm showing a lot more stuff. They, they, if, if I get out there and start taking pictures, um, they know what I'm doing and I get lesser and lesser. So if I just go out there nonchalantly, now I will take pictures, but I try to do it when I feel like they're not watching me. But I'm, from the time I enter, the time I go in there, I'm being watched and I'm being followed. And I know that. They're pretty amazing, really, what they can do. It's, it's just, it's amazing. You got to go down there with me sometime. Well, we're definitely planning to do And my girlfriend, that, she's Jason. scared to death. Oh. Yeah. She's uh, fierce for my life. And, uh, and I told her, I said, well, they're not going to mess with you. I mean, they do like girls. She's like, yeah, you're using me for bait. <laughs> I said, well, you know, you will get an experience. And there's other areas too that we that I can go that um, uh, they do make themselves known. Um, I don't know them, and I don't trust them. I don't trust any of them. Don't ever trust them. Don't All right, fellas, them. Jason, excellent update. Uh, we're going to have to close out. We're running short on time. Uh, okay. Our judge, thank you very much. You did a great job, Tom. Everyone, much appreciated, and stay tuned for the next segment. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open.